we've got a Mitsubishi Electric UI UI UI. We'll get this cover off. There you go, look, 15 volts between four and five. There's definitely signs of summer road and activity in here. Definitely getting myself a Starbucks this morning. Just grabbed the Tech MCT. So I think I might actually get to use the world's most expensive umbrella. That is running now. And we've got a Mitsubishi Electric. Just a split system, this one. You'll see there we've got a ceiling cassette and then we've had some reports that we're getting an error code. So I've uh, just switched this on. I'll just get this going, but we can have a look at the error history as well. Uh, I think it's a U8 fault that's been reported, so uh, we can just check the history, like I said. Uh, let's go into here. So there you go, look. U8, U8, U8. Uh, let's come out of that, see if we can get it to go. See if we can get it to go back into a U8 fault, but. Um, yeah, we might have to go outside and we'll, uh, we'll have a look at that outdoor unit. I'm not sure whether you'll be able to see this on camera, but that fan there, that fan's running. That one there is doing absolutely nothing, so yeah, it's not yet. Obviously gone out in an error, but Sure, you can see that fan spinning, so right, that's just kicked out now. So what I would do, we'll get this cover off. Just in case you're wondering, it is a uh, P125. Uh, what is it, 2011, so it's 10 years old. Um, anyway, let's have a look inside. So, uh, right, in order to test the fan motor uh, or the PCB. If we go by what the manual states, if we look up in this top corner, so you'll see those two plugs there, we've got CNF1 and CNF2. Those are our two power outputs to the upper and the lower fan motor. And then if you look sort of right next to it in that corner, you'll see a fuse just there, that's F5. So. First thing it will tell you to do is check that F5 fuse. If that's blown, um, then you know something serious has gone wrong with that fan motor. If that F5 fuse is okay, it will then say to check the voltage from these uh, from the board basically to each motor. I've got some some um, I've got some leads with a really narrow sort of thin end, so I'll be able to put the probe in that plug there, but. You can remove the plug, but just do not do that while the system's running or while that's powered up. You want to unplug that while the system's not running, otherwise you will cause damage. And then you can check between one and four, and you're looking for around, I think it's around 300 volts DC. And then between four and five, you want 15 volts DC. So you can check that on, on both of these. Um, if you are getting the correct power from the board to the motor then it basically says your motor is is dead it doesn't tell you any way of checking any sort of resistance across the motor that's it if it's outputting the correct voltage and it's not turning then the motor's dead uh, if it's not outputting the correct voltage then it will say that the pcb is dead and needs replacing but if that's the case then generally it's because the motor has took the board. Now it doesn't say it's in the service manual, but on the app, it says to change both. It's recommended in either scenario to change the motor and the board. So um, I know it's pretty vague and it, like I say, it doesn't give you any way of checking across uh, any resistance across this motor, but that's what the manual says. So that is what we'll do. Um, we'll check, we'll check those, um, Check those outputs off those plugs first. We are going to use this. It's a field piece meter. And these things are going to come in handy today. So these probes 
uh, should be ideal for getting into the uh, into the pins on the plugs. I do really like the magnet on this meter too. You get you get those sort of two magnets. Super strong. Right, you'll probably see there. Look, we're on pins one and four of uh, the first motor. You'll see there. Look, 340 volts DC. So uh, we'll just check the next one down, and then we'll check between pins four and five to see if we get about 15 volts DC. That there's on the next one down. 330 volts. So we'll check between four and five. There you go, look, 15 volts between 4 and 5. We've just checked the voltage, uh, just coming off CNF1 and CNF2. So these two cables down to our motor. We're getting over 300 volts between 1 and 4 off each, and then between 4 and 5, we're getting 15 volts DC. So that board there at the moment is supplying the correct voltage but uh, obviously that motor nothing's happening so um, we'll see if we can spin it we'll see if it's seized um, but it's definitely getting the voltage so um, we've definitely got a duff motor that's for sure now if you do look at um, the app it does state even if you've got correct readings on your pcb it is recommended that if the motor doesn't work, you change the PCB and vice versa. Uh, if the PCB is gone because of the fan, you change the fan motor. So uh, I'll put that up now um, just in case you're wondering. But uh, like I said, yeah, they do recommend that you change these in pairs. So what I will do though, I'm just going to I'll take this casing off here, um, see if we can get to that fan and have a look. Um, it doesn't actually show you on the app uh, a way of testing the resistance on this motor. What I will do, because I don't know if you can see there, but there's definitely signs of some rodent activity in here. I mean, it's pretty, it's in a little bit of a, of a rural spot. Um, so I will sort of take this cover off and we'll check, although the wiring's all high level, we'll, we'll check that wiring harness where it goes there and then sort of runs down to the motors. Just make sure that nothing's been chewed. Stranger things have happened, so yeah, we'll, uh, we'll definitely check that wiring. So I took the cover off. The motor's not seized. And then I was just checking, checking all the wiring harnesses. Uh, nothing's been chewed, everything's okay. Um, what we will do though, just to see if we do get any differences. Um, I'll unplug the two plugs there and we'll just have a look, see if you can check for uh, resistances across anything or we'll see if we get any any different readings between the good, um, the good one and the bad one. The top plug is the top motor and obviously the, uh, the bottom plug is the bottom motor. So yeah, it's just, let's take them off, just see if we do get anything any different. Well, I did check the resistances between uh, everything off them two plugs. Everything, to be fair, read the sign, but it doesn't tell you to do that in the manual, so I'm, yeah, I'm not going to bother showing you that. But um, what I am going to do is change that motor and I'm going to change the board because it does say that on the app, to be fair, and I don't want to change one and then come back and have to change the other. So I'll just explain to the customer look, uh, you know, that's what's recommended. So that's what we'll do. Um, yeah, I think that's probably about it. I'm obviously gonna have to leave this isolated. So I'm gonna get the covers back on and then um, hopefully when I repair this, we'll, uh, we'll bring you back and you can have a look at charging this fan motor and getting this one back up and running. Luckily it's nothing, it's not an important area that it serves. So they can, uh, they can live without it for a bit, so yeah. I did give them a quote to uh, to fix that unit, and they did give us the go ahead. So we've got the parts, and we're going to head back. But uh, you'll probably see it's a, a bit of a miserable day. It's getting quite dark, and it's rainy. So definitely getting myself a Starbucks this morning, and I've also discovered oat milk in my coffee. I don't know if you guys have tried it, but 
well worth a try. Morning, what can I get for you? Morning, can I have a medium cappuccino with oat milk, please? My coffee's drank, and uh, yeah, that was a nice coffee. We've, uh, we've arrived on site, so I'm gonna go and get the bits out, and we'll, uh, we'll head on round to the unit. Right then, just grabbed the Tech MCT, so I've shown you many times before, that's the bag I use to do small repairs. Got the box of spares, so we've got the PCB, or the control PCB, and we've got the fan motor in there. I've brought along, I think I might actually get to use the world's most expensive umbrella. So, I know I've showed this magnetic base. It's, uh, the weather's a bit grim, so I have got to change that PCB, and that's what exactly what I bought it for. Things like PCB changes, stuff when it's raining, rather than set up a big tarpaulin and then I know you've all seen this, this is the Milwaukee DAB radio, this is the this is the M12 radio, still one of my favourite things from Milwaukee because I bring this absolutely everywhere so I can't put it on and video it because I'll get copyrighted but still loving this thing. Uh, I think what we'll do, I'll get this umbrella put up and then I'll start getting this unit taken apart. So I'm still using what I've got left of these these gloves. So you see these are like a, a black textured uh, disposable glove. But since COVID, they're about 15 quid a box now. I'm not going to continue to buy 15 pounds for a box of these. So Milwaukee sent me loads of gloves last winter. And I've been working my way through them. So. I will show you a selection of those gloves when I get back to the truck because I can't keep paying £15 a box for these. Well, I'm just going to take this board, um, get this board off. I do like to use these, I think I showed these before, so these are like the Ergo. Pliers. These ones from NWS. Um, they come in handy. These to get the plugs out, you can just sort of go in like that. Get some of the orca plugs out. So we will get that board taken out. Um, we'll get the fan off the motor, and we'll get the motor taken out. So let's just get some of these. Uh, get some of these plugs undone. That's the old board out, and if you look just there, look, that there is the uh, F5 fuse that I was talking about, so let's see if I can do this one-handed. Pull the cover off there, look, I mean, I've just twisted it, taken it off, but you'll see it is still intact. I did test that, um, I've got continuity across there, so it didn't take the fuse out on this occasion, but that's the fuse that you really want to be checking um, if you come across a, a failed fan motor. That there should be a new PCB, so whoop. there we go, look, control board. So I'm gonna get that unboxed and then we'll get that um, we'll get that clipped in, put all the plugs back in, and then we'll take the fan off the old motor and we'll get that old motor pulled out. We've got the we've got the board on there. We've got everything plugged in. I've just got the uh, plug for the fan motor. That's still got to come out. So what I do do though, I think I've said before, I usually take a picture of sort of the four corners of the board, and it's not because I need to know where the plugs go because 99% of the time, most of these plugs can only go into one place. But when I've finished, I like to just look at the pictures and check that I've got everything plugged in that was plugged in before because. You never know, sometimes you have plugs sort of, they hide under there, behind the board, in between wiring. You know, we all make mistakes, we all miss things, and there's still, there's a lot of um, empty spaces on these boards. So, yeah, just to, just to double check, otherwise you're gonna end up with a fault code, and then you're gonna have to switch it off, come back, have a look for the missing plug. So, just uh, somewhat a lot to do. Just take some photos, and then you can look back, and just make sure you haven't missed any plugs, but 
let's uh i'm gonna whip the lid off here and we'll uh we'll get this fan taken out of there Oh, I've just switched this on and completely forgot to do this, but you'll see in the top corner there, look, you've got a bank of dip switches. Obviously, you'll get you get that on your new board now. That won't come uh, assigned to anything. They'll all be off. So what you need to do is just copy, copy what you've already got, just replicate it um, there. They usually come with an instruction, uh, like a piece of paper, but particular one for some reason it didn't come with anything so anyway yeah we're just going to copy those deep switches there and then we'll get a switch back on power's back on we've got a green light so i'm just going to run inside um, we'll switch it on make sure the controller looks all right and then we'll, uh, we'll come back down and we'll make sure that that motor's spinning we're on we're in heat standby look so i'm just going to run back out to the outdoor unit and we'll uh see what's going on that is running now whether i can get you in to show you the fan motor So uh, yeah, we've got that top motor running. We've got that bottom motor running. Just gonna check some uh, check some air off temperatures inside, but that one, I'm gonna cool all good. So it's quite a simple one to be fair, but um, I just wanted to show you the process that I would take because it's actually quite common for fan motors to fail on these twin fan. Um, Mitsubishi units. Sometimes though, I've known it where um, it takes the, the power and the noise filter board um, behind. It causes quite a bit of damage. Usually, if it's if it's blue, that fuse there, you want to have a look further back as well, uh, just to make sure that the other boards aren't damaged. But yeah, I think that's all good. So I'm going to put the covers on, quickly go and check the uh, temperatures, and then we'll uh, get all the gear back on the van. I did forget to mention while we were sort of diagnosing the fault that these things are quite handy so when you do the course, uh, I think it's like the Mr Slim course, you'll get one of these from Mitsubishi and although they don't tell you a huge amount of information they do tell you some stuff that could come in handy when you're sort of uh, trying to diagnose a fault so it'll tell you, um, there you go, look, compressor temperature or discharge temperature on error occurring, um, so, you know, there's error history tell you the compressor operating hours the currents tell you liquid and your discharge temperature so that there that plug there just plugs into here so you plug that in there a lot so and then essentially you just flick those dip switches into whatever positions they say and then it'll give you your give you a reading on the display so yeah worth uh Worth doing the course and getting yourself one of these. Quickly before I take this down, um, put the covers back on. If any of you are wondering, this is the uh, this is the umbrella that I was using. So it's the Supco Trade Fox. Um, obviously, it's from the US, but you can get them over here. They're, I think it was about a hundred pounds, so mega expensive. But this is the exact sort of job that I wanted it for. If you've got to change your PCB. Rather than do a make a big tarpaulin, you could just uh, that's the magnetic base, so you could just stick it there. It's properly strong, look, um, and you can adjust it at all different angles. So 
not used it a massive amount, but I'm hoping now we're in the winter, I'm gonna get a lot more use out of this, but um, yeah, mega expensive, but uh, if it makes my life a bit easier, I'm all for it. So yeah, that's the, uh, that's that magnetic umbrella. We're at the back of the van. Just before I go, I did say that I'd show you some of these gloves. So uh, this is just a small selection of what Milwaukee sent me and I've, I've been using some of these all last year. You'll see, look up there, they all have different cut levels. So um, really good protection off some of these. Some have got this smart swipe, so they let you use your phone while you're using them. These ones here, it's getting pretty cold now. And I don't know whether I'm gonna be able to show you properly, but they're like fleece lined. So these are some of my favorites at the moment. Uh, again, like cut level five. So if you're doing some serious work and you don't want to cut your hands to bits, these are really good. These like hybrid ones, I think they're called the hybrids. They're like leather, uh, like a mixture of leather and material. I wore them a lot last winter for driving and stuff. They're really good. So yeah, they've got a massive selection of, uh, of gloves and I do like to use them disposable ones, but they're so expensive now that I'll probably be, now we're in the winter, I'll probably be wearing more of those. So yeah, what I am gonna do, I'm gonna give all of them, them gloves there. We've got a, one of these nice big uh, stud tape measures. We've got a Shockwave Impact um, bit set there. It's the XL box. So I did say that I'd give someone some Milwaukee stuff. So um, all that stuff there, I'll get sent out. Um, so I'll put the name on the screen now of the winner from the competition. Um, yeah, just um, DM me your details on Instagram and I'll get that stuff sent out to you. That's it for this video. Again, a massive thank you for watching. Um, much appreciated if you've subscribed. If you've hit the like button, really appreciate it. Um, it does mean a lot and uh, I'll catch you guys on the next one.